All right, forgive me, folks. This is like my 15th, 16th take. I don't know. I, I lost track on uh, on this, and I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm kind of giving up trying to get it perfect. Um, I guess let's just start with uh, what happened. Uh, around 2.30 a.m. on Friday, August 2nd, I suffered a heart attack, um, and I was stupid about it. Um I <laughs> drove myself to the hospital for starters. Uh, never do that. <laughs> I've been scolded by everyone in my life for doing that, even though I did make it there safe. Um, you know, I, I, you know, it, it was not a smart move. <laughs> I, sh- I should have called 911. Uh, obviously, I, I feel like uh, the attack started earlier. Um, started feeling chest tightness. Uh, that was the, the very first, actually, the, to be fair, in the end, that was probably the second sign. The first sign was earlier in the day. Um, I don't know if you guys ever had that sensation where it feels like your veins are pulsating. Uh, sometimes you get that, you know, when they're taking your blood pressure or whatever, you know, right. Where you feel that little, that little dit, dit, dit. But, um, my whole body felt that way earlier. Uh, and I remember texting Eric, uh, cause we were talking about the podcast, uh, about, um, my, my veins just throbbing. And at the time I was really angry about something. So I thought maybe it was just the anger and, uh, I was, I was fine. I didn't really think much of it because the throbbing did eventually go away. For those that know, I have, I have high blood pressure. I've been recently diagnosed with high blood pressure. Um, i I'm, I take a medication for it called Linzapril. Uh, and I haven't been on it very long. Uh, according to the doctors, not long enough for it to have a lasting daily effect. What that means is it helps, but it's not um, one of those things that's constantly uh, cycled through my body just yet uh, to be in effect at all times. So uh, so I had high blood pressure, still have high blood pressure, going to have high blood pressure for quite a while. Um, and it started with chest, chest tightness, uh, shortness of breath once i was unable to catch my breath very well that's when i decided to drive to the hospital <sighs> not good because where it went from there um if that had happened while i was driving I, I don't know that i'd be here today um once they mentioned the word heart attack at the hospital because i i didn't think that's what it was i don't i've never had one i don't know i'm 33 people at 33 don't have heart attacks uh, even with the history of heart disease and everything in my family even me being overweight it's very unusual for someone at 33 years old to have a heart attack my dad is more overweight than i am and much older than me and he's never had a problem like that um that doesn't mean he hasn't had cholesterol issues or diabetes issues or issues with um you know, blood pressure and all that, but he's never had a heart attack and he's way older than me. So it, it, to say it caught me off guard when they mentioned heart attack, um, it put, it put life in perspective. Let's just put it that way. Um, from there on, my mind was freaking out. Um, Heart attacks are a very serious thing. Even so-called mild attacks or light heart attacks. Every heart attack is at risk of death. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. doesn't matter how severe it is. You can die from any heart attack because any heart attack can make your heart stop working. Um, and... If your heart stops working, that's it. Um, they administered a, a bunch of different tests and medication and all this stuff to um, to fix it uh, because they, you know, they diagnosed why is it happening. Uh, when's it going to stop? Blah blah blah. Blood test to confirm that it was a heart attack, and uh, you know, echocardiograms and and I don't know, EKGs and. I don't even know. The, the, there were so many tests on it from x-rays and blood tests and everything in between. Um, I guess the, the, the bottom line to take away from it is I guess I can explain to you 
um, now that I've had even more testing done, uh, what was going on and my weird diagnosis and why things are rosier for me uh, than what it felt like then. Um, I mean, to give you an idea, my mind was so freaking out about it that uh, my body basically gave itself a stroke, but it wasn't a real stroke. Um, it was a, a, a mental trickery. It was my mind shutting down parts of my body uh, because I thought I was going to die. And so my mind was just shut down you know, like the entire left side of my body because it just, um, I was panicking. And as soon as they calmed me down, I, I could um, use everything again. So uh, I wasn't like a normal stroke or anything. It was just my mind's uh, reaction to the word heart attack. Um, scary stuff. Lucky it didn't just shut down my heart entirely in that moment. Um, a lot of thoughts go through your head then. Uh, the YouTube channel was not one of them. I can tell you that right now. Last thing I was worried about was anything with you guys or anything with this channel. Um, first thought were always my kids. Um, you know, my fiance. My, but my parents came to my mind. My sister, obviously. Um, if it, it felt like life was flashing before my eyes. All the great things, all the negative things, all the regrets I have, the things that I left unsaid. Um, and obviously my fear of uh, leaving my, my, my children without a father. Um, but I'm here. And that's, you know, knock on wood. That's what matters. I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still fighting. Uh, as I said on a community post and on Twitter, I looked at the face of death and said, not today. I know it's just a nice expression from Game of Thrones and all that, but... Um, that's what it felt like. I could have died. I, August 2nd, you know, roughly eight or so years after I met my fiance, you know, years after I had my kids, I got my, my youngest son's fourth birthday coming up this month. I could have been gone. Now, the diagnosis, uh, for it was interesting. Um, one of my valves, I had to, I have to go back and look at the paperwork to remember exactly which one. One of my valves uh, was kind of pinching itself off. And they did a really unusual thing uh, to f to try to fix it. Uh, it wasn't like a blood clot situation because that's obviously one of the worst things that happen if, if your body's creating blood clots. Uh, you don't want that. You know, blood clot can go up to your brain. It can cause an aneurysm, all that stuff. Thankfully, it wasn't blood clot rated. For some reason, my valve was restricting um, like kind of like pinching, kind of like it was pinched. Um, and they're not sure why that was the case. Uh, they, they give me, you know, nitroglycerin or whatever, uh, which is supposed to wide open your veins. Uh, and that didn't seem to be helping. Uh, and then um, some blood thinners and other stuff uh, ended up finally putting enough pressure along with my high blood pressure. So my, my heart was already, you know, going a million miles an hour, just even faster due to the attack. Um finally forced it kind of open and as soon as it forced it open the attack basically immediately stopped um and it hasn't you know as i sit here today i know it's only been you know a few days uh it hasn't gone back i've had testing done i've had monitoring done um it hasn't it doesn't look like it's going to collapse they aren't sure why it collapsed um but obviously, uh, they did say one of the likely big causes was my high blood pressure. That's probably the number one cause of all of it is my high is my high BP. If I did not have high blood pressure, chances are uh, that would have never happened because my heart was already overworking itself, and uh, it could have just been a result of my heart trying to suck in blood from that valve faster than that valve could give it, uh, and so it kind of created a suction effect. Um, so high BP. Uh, is the number one issue and they obviously assume that the rest is stress uh there are such things as stress heart attacks where it's not due to your diet it's not due to anything it's just due to stress um high stress on on your body high stress mentally uh can actually cause heart attacks and other major health concerns and uh i'm not gonna lie at the time that you know the night that it was happening i was pretty stressed it was the night after we recorded the podcast with with 5j and eric that's right i have a episode of the podcast literally recorded not edited I, uh, this is the first video first anything i've done even in this room um since then and i 
you know, I didn't say anything to Eric when, I, when he left. Um, and, and what was scary was uh, my phone wasn't really working when I was in the hospital, so I couldn't get a hold of my parents, couldn't get a hold of Yulia, uh, my fiance, couldn't get a hold of Eric, couldn't get a really, really a hold of anyone to let them know what's going on. So I was, I was going through all this mostly alone until, you know, hours later. So the moral of the story, I guess, um, right now is, I don't know if there's really a moral but obviously things have to change. Um, I am actually down weight year over year. For, for those who think that um, my weight loss and everything's a failure and all that, um, it's not. I have successfully, I know it's not a lot, but I am, I am successfully 15 pounds lighter um, today than I was a year ago. And my goal was always, every time I go in for my yearly checkup for my blood pressure, uh, is to weigh less than I did the year prior. Um, big thing right now is I was in for an additional five hours of testing yesterday, and my heart, as it stands right now, is, I mean, as close to 100% as anything. Um, if you didn't know I had a heart attack, uh, if there wasn't a report on my heart attack, if there wasn't blood tests that showed a heart attack, uh, you would think my heart is 100% healthy. So that's honestly like really good news. Uh, that means I am not worse for wear yet. But once you have a heart attack, the risk of getting more and more heart attacks is obviously much greater than before you ever had one. So right now, uh, they think what needs to happen is I need to lose weight. Um, need to lose weight significantly. Now, there are certain things they want me to change in my diet uh, to help accomplish that. Obviously, one thing is less red meat. Not no red meat. They didn't say I couldn't have zero. Uh, as long as my heart is, stays as healthy as these tests are showing, they're not saying I need to cut red meat out entirely. I can still have a burger here and there. I can still have a steak or whatever. Uh, but not to the degree I've been having them because uh, at least not until I am to a point where I've lost enough weight that I don't have high blood pressure anymore. Um, the idea is that essentially, even though I take medicine for high blood pressure and the medicine will eventually keep my blood pressure uh, stabilized at a normal level, uh, that does not replace your body's ability to regulate itself, which means losing weight in response will cause my, my blood pressure to naturally go down and go away. Uh, and they project that if I lose about 70 pounds, um, my body should be able to regulate its, the blood pressure at a normal level. Now, should is different than will. I could lose the 70 pounds and still have high blood pressure. Uh, that might be damage done to my body already that cannot be undone. Um, but typically, uh, when you have a significant amount of weight loss, uh, your body does lower blood pressure if it's a problem. So it is typical for this to work as a recovery method. Um, what needs to be done to get to that level? You know, you might think, well, you had a heart attack, so you can't exert yourself, right? You can't, you can't work out. You can't, you know, yeah, do things you normally would, you know, to, to lose weight like other people besides a diet change. Uh, and that's not true either. Um, starting about, uh, I think they said about a week and a half uh, from last Friday, uh, I'll be able to resume normal workouts. Um, they'll have me come in uh, just for w one more test, and that test will just make sure my heart is still as healthy as it showed today, uh, Today, well, really yesterday. And uh, assuming that's all good, I'll be able to work out um, like normal, do, do everything like normal. Um, Diet-wise, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it's serious here. There, there is a lot of suggested diet changes um, in the wake of a heart attack to get your body back to where you want it to be. And then the nice thing about all of this is that I don't have high cholesterol somehow. One thing I thought I would have is high cholesterol. I don't have that, and I don't have diabetes. So the only thing health-wise wrong is the blood pressure. Um. So that's great for diet because it means there's not necessarily a particular food item I need to completely eliminate from my diet because of other issues that are causing my heart to, to act up. So um, the diet plan is pretty simple. Uh, no fast food. I mean, 
that's a given in any diet, to be honest. There's no fast food. I try to home make everything. It uh, doesn't mean I can't have fast food ever, but uh, I need to start showing signs of significant weight loss before I even worry about um, partaking in a takeout pizza or McDonald's or whatever, right? I need to, I need to show signs of progress. And uh, the encouraging thing is I was already on a diet that will help. I just strayed too far from it, um, which basically was a lot of chicken, lots of fruit, lots of veggies. Um, you know, some fish, it, it, it was a really health, uh, health field diet, uh, that I was actually enjoying for the most part. Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, I, I got a little bit away from it at times because, uh, some emotional stress, but, um, it is something now that I, I don't want to die. <laughs> um, there's a real risk of if I do nothing, I could be dead by 40. I could be dead next week. Um, you don't know. Even doing all of this, I'm always going to be at risk. So I'm not going to live my life, though, like I'm like I'm dying. Um, because I've been really emotional um, really before and ever since. And I don't want to live my life uh, thinking that today is going to be the day. You know, they always say, uh, you know, live every day like it's your last well, you can't really do that because if it's the last day you're going to live, there's things you would do that you wouldn't do on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Um, and if you're doing that every single day, you're going to wear yourself out anyways. Uh, so uh, what's going to happen is a massive change in my diet, um, a, a workout plan that I, I have to do. This isn't like a, oh, you know, you can fall off it and it's okay. It's not okay. I have to lose about 70 pounds. Period. I have to drop below 200. I have to get back down to 170, 180. And then from there, it's up to me if I want to lose more and how much harder I want to work to, to try to get back to my um, sporting body that I used to have back in high school when I had a six pack. So uh, there's a lot uh, to consider. Um, a lot of things I'm going through. But I just wanted to tell you guys because this is why videos haven't been coming. Um, I've already made some public statements on it and it, it only felt right that my first video back quote unquote back was me talking about it. Uh, also talking about just a little bit of how serious you should take your own health. You know, uh, it, it doesn't hurt to, um, monitor yourself better, to watch your weight, weight better than I do. Um, you know, I'm a big boy, <laughs> a lot bigger than I ever wanted to be. Uh, don't let yourself get as big as me so you have blood pressure issues um or potentially worse i'm i am fortunate i am lucky uh that when they tested my heart that it, it it's seemingly normal right now i don't know how but it is so thanks for sticking by me um obviously health and family comes before everything uh, the, the next video to go up is probably going to be that podcast episode since it's been sitting now for way too long. Uh, and then we'll see how frequent I do content after that. Obviously, I'm, I've been taking a step back and, and doing less. Uh, and I'll probably continue to, to do less as I focus right now on family and, and health. Uh, but not too much. I can't, I can't do too much because even, you know, obviously right now I'm, I'm, I can't work. Uh, the other job that I have, um, I, I, I just can't like every, every little thing that happens in my body, every little tinge of pain, I start worrying, oh my gosh, is this, is this the next one? Um, and it's been really hard to do that work. Uh, but I, I could still do YouTube stuff and, uh, I still rely on the money I make from, from YouTube. Um, you know, so that's why this video is monetized. If, if people have an issue with it. I really don't care. I got a family to support. I got, I got miles to feed. I'm not, I'm not going to just not make money. My, this isn't me I'm making money off somebody else's tragedy or whatever. This is my life. And, uh, hopefully I'm, I'm here to live it for another 50 plus years or so. So, uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Be sure to like, and subscribe. I promise <laughs> most videos aren't going to be kind of this somber. I don't even know. I mean, I don't think there's a right or wrong way um, to talk about this. I have to accept responsibility and make the changes necessary to not let it happen in the future. I'm alive for now. 
I am doing okay health-wise for now. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.